Praise be to God as we gather together for worship. Good morning, I'm Pastor Bonnie, and I'm so glad to be with you this morning as we worship together online. Why don't you take a moment to post a greeting in the comments? Say hello, good morning, let us know who's worshiping with you today. Today, friends, is a very special day as we have a guest preacher, Brendan Voss, is joining us today. As we gather together, we celebrate a mini Easter in the midst of the Lenten season. You know, during Lent, we pause to listen to Christ, to hear Christ's invitation to receive and give love. But on each Sunday, we celebrate the mystery of faith, that we have been raised to new life in Christ. We give thanks to God for that, and we say, Amen. Friends, let us worship together and praise Jesus the Christ. Friends, let's hear this greeting together. The goodness of God has called us here. We are recipients of God's gracious love. Though we haven't always done what is right in God's sight, yet God is merciful and forgiving. Open your hearts and spirits to the refreshing love of God. Help us, O Lord, to live joyfully and peacefully in your sight. Amen. Let us join together in our opening hymn. The words will be on your screen. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thine ancient church's story, bring her but to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ, assail his ways. Fears and doubts too long have bound us free our heart 
hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. For the living of these days, you're thy children's roaring madness. Bend our pride to thy control. Shame our want, unselfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the search for thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving thee whom we adore. Our opening prayer this morning is adapted from a poem by Anne Weems. It's simply called Lent. Let us pray. Holy God, Lent is a time to take the time to let the power of our faith story take hold of us. A time to let the events get up and walk around in us. A time to intensify our living unto Christ. A time to hover over the thoughts of our hearts. A time to place our feet in the streets of Jerusalem or to walk along the sea and listen to God's word. A time to touch his robe and feel the healing surge through us. A time to ponder and a time to wonder. Lent is a time to allow a fresh new taste of you, O God. We come today asking, seeking, knocking. We meet you here today. Amen. If you have kids worshiping with you, I invite you to bring them a little bit closer to the screen. It's time for our children's moment, which is a special moment just for them. Good morning, kids. I wonder, how do you know how to pray? Who taught you? Was it your mom or maybe your dad? At the dinner table or maybe even before bed? Maybe your grandma and grandpa. When you stay at their house, maybe they bring out the big family Bible full of names and dates and they share with you Bible stories and family stories. And then you pray together. Maybe you learned how to pray at your preschool. Maybe you went to a Christian preschool where you started the day with prayer or you attended chapel. You know, there are so many ways to pray. Jesus even taught us to pray. He taught us a special prayer called the Lord's Prayer. It goes like this. In the scripture in Luke, it says, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. We say a version of that on Sundays sometimes, but it can be hard to understand. Words like hallowed or indebted, they're confusing words. But this prayer is kind of like a model for us. And you can change the words, it's okay. You can change the words so that you are speaking to God from your own heart. When Jesus taught his friends these words, he was encouraging them to praise God encouraging them to ask God for the world to be a place that was fair and right for everyone, to ask God for what they needed each day, not worrying about tomorrow. We should also ask God to forgive us and to teach us to forgive other people too. And Jesus, when he taught his friends this prayer, he was saying, it's good to ask for God to take care of you. Jesus encouraged his friends to pray like this every chance they could. And then finally, Jesus went on to tell his friends that they could trust God to answer their prayers. 
It's a wonderful thing to be able to trust God to answer our prayers and to pray together. And so let's do that together now. Let's pray together. Dear God, you are wonderful. Make our world good for all people. Give us just what we need for today. And forgive us when we mis make mistakes, especially mistakes that hurt you, ourselves, or other people. And help us to forgive too, just like Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. And obey. Lord, I'm gonna shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm gonna shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm gonna shout when the Spirit says shout. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. Our message today comes from Brendan Voss. He's a native of Plainview, Texas, and a 2018 graduate of Texas Christian University. He's a third-year student at Yale Divinity School at the Master of Divinity program in New Haven, Connecticut. Brendan found his way to Methodism in 2019 after various stints with Baptist and Presbyterian and Evangelical traditions. He recently served as an intern here in Austin at University United Methodist Church. After his graduation this coming May, Brendan will be seeking ordination as an elder in the Rio, Texas Conference, and we are so blessed to have him joining us. Apart from reading and writing for school, he loves to fill his time with walks around the neighborhood, cheering on his strange assortment of sports teams. He loves watching films and conversing with old and new friends. Today, Brendan shares his message with us called Improper Prayer, Shameless Seeking. Let us prepare to listen to God's love revealed through Brendan's message. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Good morning, St. Luke UMC. I'm Brendan, and I'm so happy to be here with you this morning. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. And he, Jesus, said to them, his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before them. And he, the friend in the house, answers from within, Don't bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you, then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? 
God of blackest midnight and of borrowed bread. Listen to your children asking. Look to your children searching. Answer your children that are knocking. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God. Amen. Every Christmas and every birthday, my parents and grandparents would always ask, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for your birthday? And I never really gave it that much forethought, and so I would always respond in the same manner. I don't know. I don't know what I want for my birthday. I don't know what I want for Christmas. Thankfully, they knew me, and thankfully, they were able to give gifts that made me happy, that delighted me, that nurtured me and filled me. Strangely enough, my grandmother has now become the same way. She lives comfortably enough, and she has everything that she could ever need. So, whenever Christmas or her birthday roll around, she usually responds in a much more polite manner than I ever uh, could give. She responds with, I don't know. I don't know what I would like for a birthday gift or a Christmas gift. This past Christmas, though, my parents gave my grandmother a gift that stood out. I'll get to that gift in a moment. This sermon and this week's scripture reading center on two fundamental aspects of living a Christian life, being in community and prayer. First, we are told a parable of a determined, of a persistent neighbor. This is a uniquely Lucan parable, and it tells the story of a person with two friends. One friend has come to this person's house at an untimely moment. We don't know if they've come exactly at midnight, but they've come at some time during the evening, during the late uh, night, and have caught this person off guard. For you see, when a person comes to the house of a first century Jewish person, Jewish hospitality law demand that this guest be given something to eat. And usually in those times, that meant being given bread. You know, it's not too different from Southern hospitality. I'm sure whenever you've had someone over at your house or you've gone over to someone's house, it has been the first question asked. Would you like anything to eat? Do you want anything to drink? And usually you have that back and forth banter between guest and, and uh, owner of the house and eventually you are given something to eat and given something to drink. But this person has been caught at night without any bread. And so they do not have the luxury of having a 24-hour supermarket or grocery store, and this person needs to find bread by another means. And so he thinks, I'll go to another friend and ask them to loan me three loaves of bread. And that's just what this person does. He goes at midnight to another friend's house, and after knocking on the door, asks, friend, will you lend me three loaves of bread, for I have an unexpected guest, and I must provide for them. But this person, this friend that he has come to, has already prepared for bed, has already gone to bed with all of his family members. You see, in, in a house of, of a first century Jewish household, there would have been a main room where everyone would have slept together. So to wake up, to get up and get this bread for this person asking, that would have necessitated the man waking up his entire family and getting the bread. He didn't want to do that, and so he, sh and he shrugs the, the friend off and says, I'm not getting up. Are you out of your mind? But 
this friend, this person with the request on behalf of another, doesn't give up. He keeps asking. He keeps persevering in his request. And we're not told this aspect in the story, but I imagine the request getting louder and louder and louder until he's woken the entire neighborhood up with this request for three loaves of bread. Finally, the the friend who had already gone to bed gets up, gets the bread, and gives it to this friend making the request. But Jesus makes sure to note that he doesn't give it because of friendship, but because of the perseverance in the request. Perseverance doesn't actually get the entire meaning behind Jesus' story here. You see, it is not so much to do with the determination of the request. This idea that the friend is literally willing into existence the bread. But it has to do with the shamelessness of the friend making the request. For you see, the friend who had the other friend come to him at midnight. He had been caught in shame, for he had no bread to give his guests. And to give his bread guests, he found himself in another shameful situation. And shame here, I want to make sure, it is nothing more than breaking boundaries, by breaking propriety. And so he lives in this improper way. He lives in this improper request. And so this request is all is rooted in shamelessness. Beloveds, in thinking about us, in thinking about how we are to take this parable, I am led to question, have we been shameless in standing up for those whose presence requires something of us? Have we stood in the middle of the street requesting and demanding on behalf of our black neighbors who suffer from increased vulnerability to the powers of death? Have we not backed down on behalf of our LGBTQ plus siblings whose presence requires love and affirmation in a world that denies their being? Have we made a fool of ourselves for the immigrant, for the disabled, for the sick? Being in community carries responsibility and support. It would have been easy of the person at midnight to say, go away, or to say, you are not my friend, or to say, you're not a part of my community, or I just want to go to bed. That's not what this friend does. This friend leans into the responsibility of being a community member. Beloved, that person who came at midnight was a part of the community, was a part of the neighborhood. It would have been very easy and it would have been proper, honestly, to say to the person coming at midnight that there's a time and a place, or to say to the person making a request, there is a certain way of doing things, and it's not by doing this. It would have been straightforward and simple to demand propriety, to demand that there is a certain way of doing things, and there's a certain time for things to be done. Beloveds, don't miss in this parable that there is impropriety and shame in caring for those that come to us in their midnight hour. This parable teaches us that asking in shamelessness and impropriety on behalf of another, that these two things, coupled with perseverance, that leads to the request being fulfilled. The second part of today's scripture reading and today's sermon is the formula of prayer here. And the formula I'm talking about is this formula of asking, seeking, and knocking. And this is heavily emphasized. 
Really, it's the same concept being told in six different ways, six different times. And it is a blessed assurance that those who ask, they will be given to, that those who seek will find, and that those who knock will have the door open to them. But what is different between this passage and its Matthew equivalent in Matthew 7 is that here what is guaranteed, what is gifted, what is given is the Holy Spirit. There isn't any prosperity gospel here. What I mean by that is we are not to ask, to seek, to knock for material gain. We are not to ask, seek, or knock in hopes that whatever we are asking for or seeking or knocking for, that that will be given to us based simply upon our determination. But what we are assured of is that the Holy Spirit will be given by our Heavenly Father. You see, the thing that draws together the parable and the formula is the Spirit. When given the Spirit, we are given the support and responsibility of community. The Spirit encourages us to stand in solidarity with all those in our community. For when we ask for the Spirit, we are asking to become a part of the community that the Spirit makes. And friends, as we are assured, when we pray for the Spirit, we are given the Spirit. But are we ready for the Spirit? Are we ready to experience radical solidarity with all of creation, with all that Spirit inhabits? If you remember at the beginning of this sermon, I noted that last Christmas my parents gave my grandmother a notable gift. They had donated to several causes in my grandmother's name. This gift given to my grandmother, it did not simply stop at my grandmother. It did not simply affect her but it drew her and my parents into community and caused them to be concerned for and care for another. When you think of Lent, you probably don't think of gifts. You may think of emptiness or of abstinence or wilderness, but not gifts. This Lenten season, may we pray for the gift of the Spirit. And on that note, will you pray with me? God of impropriety and shamelessness, would you fill us with your spirit today, this week, this season? God, your word has assured us of the spirit's presence, but we do not always know what that means, what that looks like, what that feels like, what that thinks like, what that acts like, what that moves like, what that loves like. Reveal to us good gift giving God the Spirit's presence here in our minds, in our bodies, in our homes, in our communities, in our fear, in our courage in our anger, in our joy, in our lament, in our celebration. In us, reveal your spirit so we might be known by a love bound to an ethic of care that defies all temporal and spatial boundaries. It is in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our beautiful Savior. Amen. Thank you, Brendan, for your encouraging word. Friends, let us join together in our hymn of response. The words will be on your screen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Ask and it shall be.
shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. People of God, as we come to prayer, let us remember that we do not have to twist the arm of a reluctant God to seek good things for this world, nor find ways to persuade a distant God to come near and listen to us. Let us remember that as we pray, we kneel alongside Jesus Christ in the presence of God with the help of the Spirit so friends, let us bring to mind now those people who are in need of our prayers. Holy God, we bring to you those who are ill or anxious, those who are lonely or sad, those who are despairing or defeated, those who are hungry or homeless, those whose relationships are breaking apart, those who are bullied or abused, those who cannot find work, and those who are overworked. In this silence now, let us make our own specific prayers for those on our hearts and minds today. In the presence of God, alongside Jesus Christ, with help from the Spirit, may we go into this week to live out our prayers through our lives as we listen to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus Just to trust His cleansing blood Just in simple faith to plunge me Neath the healing, cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sin and self to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him
Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Let us confess all of the ways that we have turned away from God and one another so that our broken relationships will be restored through Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Lord, things have been difficult these past days, weeks, and months. Things have happened for which we were not prepared. And we have not responded to difficulties with love, but rather with impatience. We have turned our backs on others in need placing our creature comforts first. We have been stressed, pulled, pushed, tossed. Give us peace, gracious Lord. Help us to slow down so that we can receive your healing words of love. Remind us that we stand in need of forgiveness. And then having received such love, we are to love and serve others. Teach us to pray for courage and strength. Teach us how to be good disciples for you. Teach us to listen. In Christ's name we offer this prayer. Amen. When everything seems dark, God is with us. God's love is powerful. Powerful enough to overcome any darkness that we encounter. Remember how much love has been given for you and rejoice. Amen. I invite you to offer signs of peace and love with whomever you are with in body and in spirit, saying peace be with you. consider our offering this morning, I ask that you would be in prayer over the coming weeks. Ask God to reveal to St. Luke how God is leading us into our community for the sake of those who are living apart from the love of God. And then listen to God's response. And then be moved into action, confident that we are all in this together. The prayers that we pray the time of presence that we commit, the gifts that we give, the service that we do, the witness that we bear all work for God's love and glory in the world. And they all work together in this community. Thank you for your continued financial support of St. Luke, given either online through our website at stlukeaustin.com or by the mail to St. Luke UMC, our address is 1306 West Lynn Street in Austin, Texas, 78703. 
Let us pray. Heavenly giver of all good gifts, we ask this morning that you would bless these tithes and offerings which we have given in humble gratitude. You have listened to us when we've prayed, and often we have been far more ready to ask than to listen for your answer. You know every need and every want. Loving God, you love us enough to not answer every request, but instead to give that which will lead us to those choices that bring everlasting joy. So help us to fill every breath with gratitude. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God all love ye heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Just an announcement before we close, on Sunday, March 7th, we will be hosting our Crop Hunger Walk. This year, in the midst of the pandemic and increasing job insecurity, food banks across the country have seen exponential growth in need. Folks who never imagined they would need to go to a food bank have been having to rely on them for continued support. Here in Austin, a significant portion of all the funds raised Stay right here in our community. Take a look at this message from Kevin Murphy of Church World Service. Good morning, God's people at St. Luke UMC. I'm so glad to be able to speak to you and to start by thanking you for your incredible participation in the 2020 Austin Crop Hunger Walk. You raised $6,890 which was the second highest total by any team in the walk. And it is, was the number one United Methodist total in the walk in 2020. So thank you so much for that. You know, uh, a, a figure is just a number, right? Uh, unless it has impact. And I'd like to tell you a story. It's about Erasmo, who in early 2020 received a notice for detention. Erasmo uh, talked to his wife and they decided they couldn't afford for him to possibly be away from the family for three, four, six, even six months. <clears throat> so they decided to move to Mexico to live with family that they hadn't seen in 30 years. By the time they arrived in Mexico, the pandemic was in full effect. And so their family wasn't able to take them in. It was unsafe. And they had lost jobs, and so they weren't in a position to support Erasmo and his family. Church World Service stepped in and provided, had provided a monthly food package for Erasmo and his family. We are continuing to do that. And we helped him and his family find a safe place to live. Who could have known when we walked in 2020 on March 1st, what things would have been like, right, in this, this year. And uh, who could have known that the funds we raised in 2020, which totaled over $76,000, would be so important to helping people like Erasmo uh, and his family. You were a part of that. You had that impact in 2020. Thank you again. I'd like to add one other word, and that is if you haven't signed up for the Austin Walk, please do so. Tom Weber can help you with that. He can tell you how to sign up. Um, and let's have a great walk again in 2020. I don't know, and you don't know, how someone's life will be upturned like Erasmus' life was upturned a year ago, but we know that will happen. And so let's put our best foot forward to end hunger one step at a time. God bless you. Thanks, Kevin. 
Friends, let us join together in our closing hymn. The words will be on your screen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, Everlasting arms, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I invite you to hear this benediction. Beloved of God, you have been healed and forgiven. God has poured God's love upon you so that you may be faithful disciples, offering healing love and forgiveness to all. Go in peace, and may God's peace be with you always. Amen. We join together as we sing our final hymn of blessing, the Irish blessing. Go in peace, everyone. up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you. May God hold you.